Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today I have an art journal tutorial for you. It is a from the napkins series. The napkins come from ninnysnapkins.com. Check the description box for links and discount code. So I'm preparing a few elements for this page. And here you see me putting colorized clear modeling paste from the crafters workshop through this fur branch stencil. I've colorized some of it brown and some of it green and I'm pushing it through and what I'm putting it onto is tissue paper. Now why tissue paper instead of stenciling it right onto the page? When I put it on tissue paper I can cut this out, manipulate it and get the effect of modeling paste without running the risk of making a mess or putting it in the wrong place. Because once the modeling paste is down, it's down. So here, if this didn't turn out, if it went under the stencil, I could just simply get rid of it or cut out that part. So the next part that I'm doing is taking this napkin. This is called Tawny Owl, and there are four owls. Two of them are looking one way, two of them are looking the other way which is something to pay attention when you're looking at napkins. And I'm water cutting it as close as I can to cut out that element. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now that I have the elements, the basic elements, I can play with the orientation and see how I want to and where I want to place them. I'm very visual and I need to see it. So up with the modeling paste, now that this is all dry, I am just ripping out the excess tissue paper. While it uh, will go mostly transparent or translucent, I like getting rid of any excess. So I rip out as much as I can, just with my fingers. And then because there's lots in between the pine needles, I get out my scissors and I'm cutting out some as well. I prefer the ripped edge to a cut edge, but in this case, it's a, it would be impossible to rip out those center parts. So once that is all cut out, I move on to the next part, which is the sentiment. And I want to print out the sentiments that I've chosen onto tissue paper. So what I'm doing is cutting dollar store tissue paper, the less shiny side to the top, and I'm just cutting it so it fits in the center. It's well past the, or well inside the edges. Then what I'm going to do is tape this down and I just use scotch tape, smoothing out the wrinkles and getting this as flat as I can. The flatter you get it, the better off you are. Sometimes if you don't get it perfectly flat, when it goes through the printer, it crinkles and what you print it may not exactly work. but I am taping this to a piece of copy paper. Now a good idea would be to print off the sentiment underneath this so you can see exactly where the sentiment is and make sure that your tissue paper covers it. So here is the printed copy after I put it through my laser printer. I decided that I'm going to use the colored part of the napkin. So I rip off the rest of the owls and I am going to glue down, collage down all the this napkin. And I'm not too worried. There's browns, there's blues, there's greens. The colors are absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to use this to give me my background colors. I'm putting liquid matte medium down and just decoupaging it in place. 
layering it because where you layer it, you get a darker color. And I'm absolutely loving the soft effects of this. This is something I've not done with a napkin yet, but it definitely will be something that I will do. You're getting texture, you're getting color, you're getting pattern, you're getting that wintry scene that I want to build in my background. There are, at the end, there will be some white spaces and I'll be showing you what I do to fill those in. Some of the little bits that I'm just putting it in. I'm putting selectively to some degree, I'm putting some of where the pine cones are, the brown, underneath where my fir branch will be going. But I figured the owl is in the middle of the forest, so all those colors would be kind of blurred behind him in the picture. Then I'm taking some Prussian blue, some white gesso, and I'm filling in the white areas, trying to get as close as I can to the colors that were already there. I don't want to obliterate the colors that were there. I just want to fill in the gaps, add a little, some more shades of the same color. I could have also added a little bit of green here, now that I'm looking at it from a different viewpoint. But you can still see the layers, you can still see the, the green, the white, the blues. And I'm absolutely loving how this looks. Now I'm thinking about adding some more texture and or pattern to the background and there are white spots on the owl that are snowflakes so I want to get the circular look into the background. So this stencil is called Circle of Jewels and it's the 12 inch stencil and I'm going to take white acrylic paint and then some Prussian blue to make it look like it's a snowy, wintry day. And I'm peeking to see, is this the, fa is this the effect that I wanted to get? And the answer was yes, so I continue along my way. I'm loving the look. It definitely is reading as a wintry scene. And then I do add some Prussian blue as well, and you can see some of that in the background, but that didn't get on the camera. So now I'm finally, I'm auditioning the final placement of the sentiment, the owl, the fir branch, you know, I was even deciding if I was going to put two fur branches on there or layer them. I'm cutting out the tissue paper, the sentiment that I've printed out onto tissue paper. And as I said before, my printer is a laser printer. So I know that it does not reactivate. I can print it out and pretty much immediately glue it down with a wet medium and I'm good. So I want my owl to go here, but I don't want the blue to come through the owl. I want to preserve the colors of the owl. So I'm tracing it with my Stabilo All Pencil and I have a white one. You can use a watercolor pencil. And then I'm painting the majority that underneath the owl white. And that's just so that the colors stay true to what they are. If you don't want to do this, you could glue the owl onto copy paper or other paper and then cut it out. And that would preserve the colors as well. 
It's a Liquitex li liquid matte medium underneath the owl and then on top to glue it down. And you can see how that the blue there, because I didn't put the white, that came through a little bit, but I know that's where the fur branch is going, so I wasn't concerned about that. I'm using a very light touch with my brush. I don't want to rip the napkin. Remember, it's very fragile once it's wet. I'm giving this a dry before I move to adding any more of my embellishments. Now the secret with tissue paper to make it go translucent is to use lots of liquid matte medium. And I use lots of it and I'm pushing it into the grooves and I'm putting lots on top as well. Also, you have better chance of it going translucent if the background isn't dark. So this is a very light background. There's lots of white in there. So even if some didn't go completely translucent, it's not going to look like it's sticking out. It's not going to be as noticeable. And I love how this modeling paste fur branch layers on top of the owl and gives some texture. Final placement of the sentiment, wisdom begins in wonder. And this is a sentiment that came from, I believe it's sentiment pack number one. But I'll put that in the description box. I'll verify that it was number one. And if you're interested in getting more information about my sentiment packs, you can email me at creativekatie at gmail.com. It seems strange that on pretty much, I think I'm creating this on the one of the a first day of summer and I'm doing a winter scene. Edging the page first with Prussian blue and then I think I go around with black just to frame my page. When I was doing the fur branch with the modeling paste, once I've colorized the clear modeling paste, what I did was I made about four branches. So the ones that didn't get used here are in my stash and they will be used on some other project. I'm using the floating acrylic technique to shade a little more Prussian blue on there. And it gives that soft look. And I'm loving how this has turned out. It's a frosty, cool day. I love how decoupaging the colored part of the napkins work. Now I'm using some brown and I'm just doing a little bit of shading on the owl just to make it pop just that little bit more from the background. This is the second owl page canvas that I've done. And I'll put a link to the one that I did using some an owl, uh, Cosmos owl uh, 
from Stamperia rice paper. But it won't be the last owl. And I'm adding some highlights to the fir branch. And I want this to look like the snow has fallen and is built up on this branch. I'm adding a little white along the, the evergreen as well as the pine cones. A few highlights on the owl. And I apologize, that's out of frame. I zoom in so that you can get a close-up look of what I'm doing, but that just limits the frame size. And if I'm so, and I'm involved in creating, sometimes I don't look up in the, in the viewfinder and see that I'm not getting everything I want to get. And I start with a few and a little bit, and I build up more as I want. It's easy to add, way more difficult to take away once you have. Then, of course, I need some splatters of white for more snowflakes. Thank you so much for joining me in this tutorial. I hope you got a couple tips. I hope you were inspired. Leave me a comment, share this with your creative friends. Bye for now.